Hey guys, this is an excerpt from my novel, Why Does the Heathen Rage? In this scene, a knight of Jerusalem, Robert of Burris, is with the Princess Melisson and the Patriarch of Jerusalem, Varmund, visiting the Holy Sepulchre. They entered the church, and the hot daylight vanished. Robert saw dark, swirling blurs as his eyes adjusted. The icy stone floor numbed the bottom of his feet. Overhead, the great nave came into view, flickering with candles before the chapels along the walls. A huge crucifix hung inside the bigger dome. Columns ringed the aedicule, which contained Christ's tomb. Throngs of pilgrims waited to enter the tomb and pray at the spot where God had lain dead for three days. The very air here tasted sacred. Each breath in Robert's lungs felt holy. He thought of his aunt, Joffrey's wife, Catherine. She had been the first to bring him into this church, holding his hand, taking him around to all the chapels commemorating the events in Christ's passion. She had crouched down beside him and whispered in his ear, This is why our kingdom exists. The king fights for this and all his knights, all of us. He raised his eyes to the light of the dome, bright with God's majesty, and felt the burden of this place all over again. It had fixed itself so centrally in his soul that he barely noticed anymore how it drove him. The Holy Sepulcher could never be under the power of a Muslim prince. Every Christian in the world should die fighting before that happened again. The clerics who tended to the sepulcher herded the pilgrims aside, clearing the way for the patriarch and the princess. Smoothing her veil down over her hair, Melisande said, I prefer not to go ahead of the poor. God has placed you where he has, said the patriarch. Approaching the tomb, Robert and Melisande knelt down on either side of the patriarch. Robert thought that the patriarch might pray aloud, lead them in some benediction. But he did not. He was silent, his eyes clenched. The church was silent. The tomb of Christ yawned cold before them. Varmund whispered something to Melisande. She rose. Robert could see her, too, bearing the burden of this place, heavier for her as the king's heir. She stooped to enter the low door of Christ's tomb. Closing his eyes, Robert went through a psalm in his head. He knew little scripture line for line, but this verse always came back to him clearly. If I forget thee, Jerusalem, let my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue cleave to my jaws. His aunt had recited it with him when he was very young. It was as if after that one time of hearing her say it, Every word burned itself in him. As a boy, he'd imagined his right hand vanishing if he ever stopped caring about Jerusalem. In the shade of his thoughts, he saw the king's face, just the way it had looked before he climbed over the wall of Karput. He opened his eyes, thinking that the king was at Haran now, in another dungeon, in darkness. Melisande emerged from the tomb, her eyes distant. She looked older. As she walked back to the patriarch and knelt again, Robert watched her clasp her hands and close her eyes. The cathedral light accented her beauty like a halo. The patriarch touched Robert's shoulder. Go, knight. Robert's eyes focused again on the little opening of the sepulcher, dark like a dungeon. He went in. Inside was nothing like the church. No gold, no jewels, just a narrow cave in the ancient rock. A single candle broke the darkness, lighting the stone where Christ had lain. He knelt. The gnarled stone bit at his knees. He crossed himself, and all the fury, all the howling and the clanging swords and wars shrank down into a silent moment. He felt powerless, like he was a child again. Christ was with him, beside him, and there was nothing else. He bent down to kiss the stone floor, which looked cold and smooth, but was most assuredly stained with God's blood.